Light has been recognized as a source of energy and healing since the early days of recorded time. Ancient Egyptians practiced healing by sunlight. In the 17th century, Sir Isaac Newton identified the visible spectrum by separating light with a prism. In 1917, Albert Einstein first explained the theory of stimulated emission, which became the basis of light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation, or, in other words, laser. During the 1940s and 50s, scientists and engineers did extensive work to realize a practical device based on Einstein's principle, and in 1960, the first laser was developed. By the end of that decade, a Hungarian physician, Andre Mester, reported an improvement in the healing of wounds through non-ablative, low-level laser radiation, and is credited with the discovery of low-level laser therapy. Today, this therapy is now referred to as photobiomodulation. Photo meaning light, bio meaning life, and modulation meaning change, and is the preferred therapeutic treatment option that is drug-free, non-invasive, and non-toxic with no side effects, treating the cause of the injury and pain, not just the symptoms. However, not all lasers are created equal, and to achieve these effects, it requires a thorough understanding of laser science regarding proper light and tissue interaction, of which there exists wide variations and disagreements. Laser science begins with a look at how light interacts with the human body to provide a therapeutic response. All light is composed of photons. Photons are small packets of light energy. This energy penetrates the skin and underlying structures and holds their intensity until being absorbed by the human body. More specifically, looking at laser therapy, first, laser light at specific wavelengths, primarily in the infrared and invisible spectrum from 700 to 1200 nanometers, is delivered to the tissue via a probe in contact mode with the surface of the skin. Second, the light enters the cell's mitochondria and is absorbed by the chromophores, including the protein cytochrome C oxidase, or CCO, which then increases its activity. Third, as a result of the heightened activity, three molecules are affected. The first, adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, where we see an increase in the main energy source for the majority of cellular functions. The second, reactive oxygen species, or ROS which activates transcription factors positively impacting cellular repair and healing. And the third, nitric oxide, or NO, which increases circulation, decreases inflammation, and enhances the transport of oxygen and immune cells throughout the tissue, ultimately resulting in the clinical outcomes of reduction in pain, reduction in inflammation, increased range of motion, and helping the body heal itself leading to an increase in cellular health and energy and acceleration of the healing process. To achieve a predictable outcome, photobiomodulation relies on four key parameters of laser technology. The first, the type of light, of which there are three distinct characteristics that differ it significantly from ordinary light. First, it's collimated, meaning it's focused in one direction as opposed to ordinary light, which scatters. Second, it's monochromatic, where a single wavelength of color allows energy to be delivered to specific tissues in specific ways, as opposed to ordinary light, which is a mixture of colors. And third, it's coherent, which means it can be delivered in a tight beam that is both strong and concentrated, as opposed to ordinary light, which is weak and diffused. The second parameter is wavelength. Photobiomodulation requires absorption of light energy, which requires the correct wavelength. Whenever light hits tissue, four different effects can occur. Reflection, scattering, absorption, and transmission. The wrong wavelength and the light energy could be transmitted or scattered rather than being absorbed by the human body. In general, a longer wavelength in the infrared spectrum results in a deeper penetration into the treatment area. Our third key parameter is laser operation, of which there are two modes, continuous wave or pulsed mode. The type of operating mode directly affects the amount of dosage or energy. With a continuous wave treatment, the dosage can be calculated easily. When frequency modulation and pulsing are introduced, calculation of the dosage becomes more complex and can lead to inaccurate claims and immeasurable results. Our fourth parameter is power or energy density. 
The amount of energy delivered determines the magnitude of the laser interaction within the tissues and the individual cells. Laser energy is calculated in joules and measured by multiplying the treatment time with the power level. One cannot compensate with increased treatment time for the lack of laser power or intensity. An important consideration is how many joules reach the target tissue and not just how many joules are delivered during the treatment. The FDA regulates all lasers, including medical lasers, and has classified them according to power levels from class 1, 2, 3, and 4. For example, class 1 would be a laser printer. Class 2 would be a barcode scanner. Class 3 has two subcategories. 3A would be a laser pointer, and 3B would be a small laser, like a box laser. And class 4 would be a laser used in laser therapy. Certain requirements have been established for each classification of laser, primarily based on eye safety. Lasers used for photobiomodulation were originally Class III lasers that were cleared by the FDA in 2002, with power levels from 5 milliwatts to 500 milliwatts, but today, many are Class IV with power levels above 500 milliwatts, or one half watt up. With proper training and proper use, all lasers, including Class IV lasers, are safe to use. Laser technology that can provide and combine the correct type of light, wavelengths, operating modes, and power or energy density will generate the penetration and dosage needed to reach the targeted tissues and areas. The net result is a cascade of beneficial chemical reactions that target the body's natural healing and ability. This video has been sponsored by Aspen Laser as part of an educational series from Aspen Laser University.